Okay, uh, let's continue with our discussion on um, optimization methods. Uh, remember that we pretty much went through a lot of um, major um, gradient-based um, algorithms or optimizers. Um, and then what's left off in this chapter include gradient frame optimizers, which is really a quick introduction. And then on top of that has a lot of um, heuristics. So we'll discuss what is heuristics and then how we can deal with heuristics in terms of their general understanding, okay? So let's take a look at uh, gradient free optimizers first. So one of the methods is called Nelder Mead method. It uses the nodal objective values of uh, n-dimensional simplex. Just remember that uh, in one-dimensional simplex is a line, two-dimensional simplex is a triangle, et cetera, et cetera. And then um, in 2D, a simplex has three nodes, a triangle. For given n simplex, the objective values are ranked and reordered such that you have fx1 less than or equal to fx2, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, so that we can order the objective function for each node, each node of the uh, n simplex. In other, in other words, uh, you, you, can, you can think of it as in a triangle, just evaluate the objective function for each of the nodes in that triangle and then rank the solution, solution uh, rank the objective function value of those three uh, distinct nodes. And then it turns out to be this uh, fx1, f less than fx2, less than fx3 to order them. And then we call this xn plus one is the worst point, and then x1 is the best or minimum point. There are three types of moves. It could be re reflection, could be expansion or contraction, or reduction. So there's a video that's actually very helpful uh, to illustrate what is reflection, what is um, expansion and contraction. Conceptually, you could try to understand that uh, for now. And then in, ter in terms of algorithm itself, it also have this idea of um, expansion and contraction as well. We can take a look at this animation uh, shortly. Okay, let's look at the animation. For the mead, uh, now the mead, um, algorithm that's from Wikipedia, just to take a look at what's happening on the right-hand side. Start with a triangle, use, use, use those contraction, uh, uh, retract, uh, contraction, and all those possible uh, movement to come back with optimal solution in this example. Yeah, that's just some animation for you to digest. And um, yep, so we do want to move on to next set of um, algorithms. So we talked about uh, traditional algorithms. Most of them are local search and then can't guarantee global optimality except for linear and convex optimization. Results often depend on the initial starting points, except linear and uh, convex problems. Methods tend to be problem, problem specific. You have to think about proper solution with, proper, uh, with a specific problem. In other words, for different problems, you may have different solution algorithms to pick different uh, solution algorithms. You have to struggle to cope problems with discontinuity 
discontinuity in this type of uh, traditional optimization algorithms. And then nature-inspired optimization algorithms are called heuristics or meta-heuristics algorithms. It, these are the key um, ones, including genetic algorithms, and colony optimization, firefly al um, algorithm, particle swarm optimization, it is, et cetera, et cetera. Tend, tend to be a global optimizer so as to increase the probability of finding the global optimality, that's number one. Number two, solve a wider class of problems, treating them as black box, or draw inspiration from nature. Example would be swarm intelligence, but they can be potentially more computationally expensive. So now we are going to move on to this set of nature-inspired nature optimization algorithms. However, because the algorithm itself has been implemented in a lot of different packages, I don't expect you to know exactly how the algorithm work, but at high level, you should understand what it's trying to do and then um, how, um, what is trying to do, what's the main ob objective, what can be applied in which type of uh, set of problems instead of how it is done. So in, in terms of the um, stochastic or meta heuristic algorithms, it includes some of this key literature that you can, that you can take a look. Include genetic algorithms, evolutional strategy, Evolutional programming, that's one um, direction, one set. Second direction or set would be simulated annealing type of search and colony optimization, genetic uh, programming. And the third set is particle swarm optimization, differential evolution, harmony search, honeybee algorithm, artificial bee colony. These the third and the fourth one is a lot of them are um, developed by uh, the author of the textbook, Firefly algorithm, cuckoo search, bat algorithm, flower pollination algorithm. So let's take a look at. Um, apparently, if you are interested in details or a lot of depth of the algorithm itself. Uh, this one, optimization techniques and applications with example would be a good textbook to take a look. So let's look at this uh, nature inspired algorithm. I'll discuss every single one really at a very high level just to, to introduce, give you an introduction. So for genetic algorithms, it comes back from the genetics. So it encodes the solution to a problem as chromosomes and then use genetic operators such as crossover mutation and selection to evolve the population. So what is crossover? If you have two different generic sequence, you do crossover so that the first half of the first genetic sequence combined with second half of the second genetic sequence to come back with a new sequence for the first one. Second one is take the first part of a second sequence with second part of the first sequence. That would be the second genetic sequence that we have. And then that's one crossover. Second one is called mutation. Mutation is really that operation is muted of one of the um, number from genetic, genetic sequence from one to zero, which is the fourth one in this example. As time goes on, you can choose either crossover or mutation or selection, and then try to evolve the population at the end, try to find the global optimum. It's starting with the random sampling, the population will gradually converge. That's genetic algorithm and simulated annealing. It comes that with the idea of uh, using metal annealing to increase strengths. This is called simulated annealing. You have a probabilistic uh, related move and then you have a cooling schedule 
to help you to um, to converge to stop the algorithm basically that's simulated annealing third one that we want to discuss is particle swarm optimization that learns from all of this uh, school of fish or particles how they evolve over time it's a very interesting um interesting um youtube video that the, the professor young actually um introduced it should be uh to take a look at yourself myself actually did take a look you know it's this link of course you could always um click from that particular link to uh take a look see how the it is working So I went through this video together with you. But the idea is really a lot of nature-inspired algorithm, optimization algorithms for, um, for um, uh, all of this type of optimization problems. OK? It's quite efficient, but it can have premature convergence. That's all that you need to know. I don't think you need to go through all of these algorithms, how it comes, uh, this update, because it's just infeasible for you to um, to go through it with half a page of description of uh, description of the algorithm in the in the textbook. I would rather think that it's important for you to read that half a page to understand what it is, how it may be used, and instead of the math behind the algorithm. There are more uh, these type of um, algorithms for all of, them, all of the heuristics that we are going to discuss after this section, you should do the same. Just read that half, par uh, half page paragraph, try to know, kind of know what that is, okay? Firefly algorithm. I'm not going to go through this um, video, but you should all go through that yourself. And then it it's just try to mimic how Firefly actually uh, do some of this um, automatic um, um, move or not move. And uh, here also introduce you why Firefly algorithm is so uh, efficient. You should take a look at the demo video that the professor put together on the Firefly algorithm. Uh, it's really the the um, 
my uh, the output of the algorithm itself using a video to show the output to give you a conceptual understanding of uh, Firefly algorithm. And the cuckoo search algorithm for different how does cuckoo how this nature inspired algorithm work based on cuckoo's behavior. You can take a look at the BBC uh, video from the link as well. That's a cuckoo search. And in terms of demo video, how the algorithm works in the real example numeric experiment. Here's a, a mathematical foundation to see uh, where it should uh, um, to move to. And bat algorithm. There's a BBC video on this as well. And demo of the numeric example of this example to find the optimum of each, each uh, local optimum of each of the um, point. Flower pollination algorithm. There's a BBC video. I, I don't think this actually works. Unfortunately, that doesn't work in the United States, but it's really, you know, at least you can take a look at, um, read the textbook to know how it is, what's the idea behind this uh, algorithm. That's a mathematical formula, how, how you update each, um, local pollination of update the current solution. And some of the typical parameters that you could uh, could use. And look at the demo video at YouTube on the flower pollination algorithm. That one actually I'll just show you. It's available. Oh, that one I actually didn't open yet. Okay, some of this um, interesting visualization in terms of numerical computation that uh, the professor put together and also some of the videos that actually describe nature itself. These are the references, but one thing I just want to point out, you know, uh, a lot of these algorithms has been implemented in a lot of packages, such as you can see that in MATLAB and also in R, let's say look at it in R, you can use Optim R or Optim to use nail the meat method and simulated annealing and others. They also have quadratic programming solver solve.qp and solve.qr for least square uh, solver as well as a Firefly algorithm. Python use something uh, a little bit different, but it's the same thing as scipy.optimize, which includes 
the conduit gradient, Newton's method, trust region method, and least square minimization. So depending on which algorithm you kind of want to try, you might find different packages from different programming languages, either R or Python or MATLAB, okay? Uh, again, you just need to uh, go through some of this, get a high level understanding of each of the algorithm, and then you, you, uh, um, you are all set to go. So I just want to, you know, as a closing remark, what I want to mention is by now, if you think about what we started, we started introduction to algorithm and optimization. We started mathematical foundations, and then we get a little bit depth of uh, the algorithms in optimization. But you might be wondering, why am I learning this? It's really that starting from next week, next chapter, you would realize that a lot of the um, a lot of the data mining algorithm actually have to be heavily relying on what we have done so far, including the optimization algorithms and mathematical foundations. Give you a heads up. Next week, next chapter, we're going to learn um, um, linear regression. How does linear regression uh, or curve fitting relates to um, optimization? And then on top of that, we start build upon uh, more of the data mining algorithms. We 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 are going to study not linear, not only linear regression, but also um, uh, but also uh, things such as um, logistic regression and also neural networks. Uh, clustering, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, but they are all from the optimization perspective. Okay, um, I'll just stop here for this chapter. Uh, reach out if you have any questions. Thank you.